Hey everyone, today we're looking at the instrument cluster for the A86 Corolla. I will focus on the common areas that need addressing when you're dealing with an aging conversion. Let's start by looking at the connectors on the cluster. The first thing you notice is the plastic lining with the metal tracks. The plastic lining is a printed circuit stencil and the metal tracks are what provide the electrical continuity. To trace each of the items in the cluster, it is a case of selecting the pin that you're interested in and following the lines on the circuit stencil. I'll start by tracing the most commonly asked item, that being the RPM signal for the TACO. The TACO signal is traditionally sent via the negative ignition coil on the older model cars, or in the case of a fuel injected model, there is a provision within the igniter. On the A86 cluster, locate the IG dash on the circuit stencil, and you'll notice there's a screw in place. Trace the metallic strip, and you'll see it comes out on the second plug on the second pin from the left. To avoid any confusion, I have placed the cluster face down with the Toyota and other riding the correct way up. Whatever you do, don't run a new wire directly from the negative coil or the igniter to the back of the cluster. The only reason why you do this is if the factory wiring has been damaged or is missing. As you guess, Toyota have made provisions in the existing wiring for this already. You will see a wire provisioned within the engine bay, under the dash or within the kick panels for the connection to occur. It's usually black in colour. On the A86, it is located in the centre of the firewall in a 15 pin plug. Now that you've located the body loom connector on the A86 firewall, let's discuss the wires that are used in each of the pins. Pin 1 is a temperature gauge for the dash. It's a yellow wire with a green stripe. Pin 2 is the injector power, which is a black wire with an orange stripe. Pin 3 is the reverse lights. So when you select the reverse gear, the lights on the back light up. This is a red wire with a black stripe. Pin 7 is the oil pressure sender, a yellow wire with a black stripe. Pin 9 is the reverse ignition power. This wire has 12 volt ignition power whenever the ignition is on. This is a red wire with a blue stripe. Pin 11 is the AC pressure switch, which is a white wire. Pin 12 is the AC clutch switch, which is a black wire with a white stripe. Pin 13 is a TACO signal wire. This is what we traced before. It runs to the back of the instrument cluster and is a black wire. Pin 14 is a starter solenoid wire. This is what actually starts the car and is a black wire with a white stripe. And pin 15 is the AC switch. In total, there are 12 globes that are used in the A86 cluster. A handy tip in identifying which globe does what is to remove the globe and show on a torch in the back of the cluster. If you look at the front, you'll see clearly what the globe is used for. It's also worth noting that there are four globes that are quite large in size that are used to illuminate the cluster when your headlights are on. If you're finding your cluster doesn't light up and the globes aren't blown, check the taillight fuse as this protects the cluster. So now let's look at the cluster pins themselves. The first pin is the left indicator. The second pin is the right indicator. The third pin is your fuel gauge input. The fourth pin is your low brake fluid warning light. Pin five is the handbrake warning light. Pin six is, the, is ignition power. This is protected by the dome fuse. Pin seven is the speed pulse output. Pin eight is the door open warning. Pin nine is your low fuel warning. Pin 10 is an earth and pins 11 to 14 are empty. Now let's look at the second plug within the cluster. Pin 15 is the ignition power, which is protected by the gauge fuse. Pin 16 is your TACO input. Pin 17 is ignition power, which is protected by the ignition fuse. Pin 18 is your alternator light. This has continuity to the charge fuse within the engine bay fuse box. Pin 19 is an earth. Pin 20 is your high beam warning light. Pin 21 is blank. Pin 22 is the check engine light, which is present in EFI models only. Pin 23 is your oil pressure warning light. Pin 24 is blank. Pin 25 is your water temperature input. Pin 26 is an earth. Pin 27 is the light power, which illuminates the cluster. This is protected by the tail fuse. And pin 28 is an earth. As the EFI clusters can be difficult to obtain, I usually connect the check engine warning light to the low brake fluid warning light. This way you can still read codes from the ECU when required, 
but the only downside is, is when the light comes on, you need to check both the ECU for codes and the brake fluid levels. Now I'll talk about how the speedo output works. The speedo cable connects into the back of the cluster and for each revolution it makes, four pulses are generated. This is done via the magnetic reed switches within the speedo assembly itself. The faster you drive, the more frequent the pulses are and the ECU calculates your speed based on the duration of the pulses. Many people do not wire in a speedo sense to the ECU as the car does appear to run fine without it. In the 20 valves for instance, the rev limit is dropped by 500 RPM if you don't connect the signal and the timing is also adjusted to a more conservative tune. The 16 valve also relies on the speed sense input, mostly for trimming fuel and adjusting the timing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below if you have found it useful and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again.